Hello and welcome back to another episode of Tech Champions. I'm your host, Daniel Beatty. As you know, we take time each week and sit down with thought leaders and industry experts in the field of technology. We learn about their journey and their mission and get their take on the latest trends in the industry. We always have amazing guests on the show. Today is no exception. Joining us from Kansas City is Tyrone Watson Ferguson. Tyrone, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah, glad you could make it on. So Tyrone, you currently serve as the SVP and CISO for Security Bank of Kansas City. So let's start with just yes, giving our, our viewers a little bit of uh, your background and kind of your journey to this point professionally. Okay. Um, uh, I've been in my current role for almost four years. Um, prior to that, I was the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City for about 10 and a half years and I uh, served in different technical roles there from production support to next level support and eventually uh, moved into information security um, and then had like a analyst or security sock role and then moved into governance and risk and uh, eventually uh, did all of it <laughs> mixed together and helped, uh, you know, design and implement uh, controls around our security um applications and, and, and the different payment systems that's used for, throughout the, uh, the nation, actually. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's great. Sounds like a, a cool journey that you've had uh, a lot of different roles. So, and I know um, something you're pretty passionate about, Tyrone, is uh, leadership and its effect on businesses. And I think one of your quotes when we talked earlier was, quality leadership can help you overcome anything which is great. Um, yeah. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about what you mean by that? Uh, what I've been learning is that um, no matter what situation you're in and what type of environment you're in, if you have a leadership approach to, to really help um, foster a spirit of like overcoming and, and rejuvenation, it really pays dividends like no other. So like you're always gonna have some type of technical issues, but getting into creating a culture of problem solvers versus uh, kind of problem uh, amplifiers, uh, it, it really helps change the focal point of solving a problem to solving a problem from just staring at the problem and being um, overwhelmed by it. Right, okay, yeah, I like that, um, absolutely. And the, the old adage is true, the, you know, the top-down leadership, it really does start there. Um, and I've, I've seen great, yes, I've sir. seen, you know, great teams that were led by not great leaders and they turn out to be not great <laughs> teams, right? <laughs> and the opposite, opposite can be true too. Um, so what are, tell our viewers, what are some steps that you've taken to make yourself a better leader? Oh, man. Um, unlearning is probably the biggest thing I've had to learn. Uh, um, uh, unlearning some habits that I, I probably had before or some, some and not being able to separate um, myself as far as taking things personally. So over, over the last four years, I've really tried to focus on understanding myself more. And what I've learned is the better I understand myself, the better I can relate and understand uh, people uh, I interact with and those around me. And so for me, I've really spent time trying to really better understand myself and just become a better quality individual and not look at individuals in a singular sense as, um, you know, productive or, or unproductive, really take a holistic approach, man. Uh, understand the whole person as far as people I interact with and not take things personally. Those are the two biggest things I've, I've really, I would say, added to my to my personality or, or psyche over the last uh, few years. Yeah, no, that's great. I, I mean, that, and we don't talk a lot about that. We talk a lot about education and, you know, putting information in our brains, right? But at the end of the day, we're you know we we have a life outside work, and um, to be able to understand that that people go through all kinds of different things, especially in a year like 2020, right, with the pandemic. Oh it my goodness! Affected a lot of people mentally, and I mean, 
I'm a pretty upbeat person, but there were times in 2020 where I felt like, you know, some depression and things like that. And it, it affects, affects your whole, whole life and works included in that, in that realm. So I think Absolutely. that's great. That's a, that's a great approach. Thank Tyrone. I really appreciate that. Um, and, uh, I wanted to change gears just a little bit. So I, I love to read most of the time I end up doing an audio book because I'm, you know, on a run or a treadmill or something. And, uh, it's not always a physical book, but I do, I do dig into, uh, books from time to time. And you mentioned a book that had a big effect on you it was called the Phoenix project. And yes, can you sir. tell our viewers about some of the things you, uh, you, you learned from that book, some of the highlights and what it taught you about, about leadership. Oh man, uh, Phoenix Project by Gene Kim. Um, it really highlighted how leadership can overcome a uh, technical culture of people that's really just kind of been beat down. Uh, reading the book, it really took me through real life scenarios in all my roles throughout my career. Uh, in different organizations and but not necessarily just technology roles. Um, just anytime you're involved in something and um, the perspective of, of how you are going to accomplish all these goals, it, it can be really overwhelming. So the book taught me, hey, first, uh, really focus on being intentional when you're doing things uh, as a leader. One of my one of my mentors uh, taught me that leaders cast big shadows, and that whether you know it or not, uh, how you interact with people, and even in, in just fleeting uh, encounters, can really set the tempo. You can kind of literally like pass the energy onto that person. So if if you're having a bad day. And, and you, you know, pass that negative energy on to someone else. In turn, that can create a chain reaction where they essentially <laughs> pass the energy on. So the book taught me really uh, acknowledge the problems that you have and be intentional about solving those problems and do it in a manner, create a, a safe workplace um, for people to express themselves and really bring things to the surface without feeling it attack so um all these things you know you learn throughout your career and when you go through management training all that good stuff but seeing it in a, a fictional work that dealt with real life problems it, it just resonated with me for some reason yeah no that's great it sounds like a cool approach i'll have to check it out um and our our leadership team uh, actually at automax has read through that Brene brown book dare to lead which talks a lot about you know, being, being honest, basically, and having, being able to have those difficult conversations and that can cover just about any the whole range of, of topics, right? It could be HR stuff to technology, to how yeah. teams interact and things like that too. So that's great. Phoenix Project. Who'd you say the author was? Gene Kim. Gene Kim. Okay, great. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to check that out. Um, so one final question, we'll kind of wrap the show up uh, since we're, we're tech champions, right? Uh, I like to ask mm -hmm. folks, what's one characteristic you think it takes to become a tech champion? Uh, I already alluded to it. Uh, unlearn. I've had to unlearn ways of thinking to keep moving forward and uh, adopt new principles, especially in technology. Um, unlearn old habits that no longer serve you or no longer applicable and keep things simple as possible. Break problems down to their, to their lowest form, in a sense. All right. Okay, I like that. Unlearn. That's a good one. Uh, and I think that's unique. I'm not sure if anybody else say that. I think it's a great word, though. I love it. So, Tyrone, uh, thank you appreciate so much for being on the show. I really appreciate your input. If people wanted to reach out and find you, um, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, probably just LinkedIn. Uh, well, LinkedIn name is pretty long. I think it's my whole name, <laughs> but LinkedIn is definitely the best way to do it. Okay. No, that's great. Um, and thanks again for being on the show. I really appreciate it. And to our viewing audience, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Tech Champions.